Welcome, everyone. Have you guys already had your lunch? Probably, right? What time is it by you? Two o'clock? Yes, I made sure I ate. So yeah, it's two. So I think everybody's probably, depending on where they are, maybe the West Coast schools might be eating. Yeah. Water. I <laughs> ate, just exercised the dog. <laughs> no, I gave water. my dog a treat. So I did the same. <laughs> I was like, here's your green beans. You yeah. have to walk. You shut up. You shut up. <laughs> she, she has her con. <laughs> I love Let's it. Keep our fingers crossed. I know, I know, I know. But you know, we're only human. If our dogs bark, there's nothing we can do about that. I guys. took the squeaky toys and threw them in the other room in case she starts to squeak a toy. Oh my I God. love it. Oh my goodness. Welcome everyone to our webinar today. This is the first time we've done a webinar on a Thursday and I like it a lot. And I feel like you guys do too, because we had more signups for this webinar than any other webinar in the past. Right. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Okay, reminder. Yeah, weekend is coming. It's, it's Friday Junior. That that's yeah. what they say at my gym. They call Thursdays Friday Junior. Um, okay, so this is recorded. I'm super excited about that. So you guys, sorry, <laughs> you see some people you I'm know. At the chat. Sorry, <laughs> join us in the chat. We're gonna have a whole other. Uh, webinar going on there where we're just getting to know each other. Um, but here we're going to be talking about financial aid and admissions and bridging the gap. I am um, so stoked to have our co-host today. Really quick, we are recording this. You will get a link to it tomorrow. And so if you've heard something really great on here and you're like, oh, I wish my team could hear this, <laughs> you'll be able to forward it to them. Um, I would love to hear a, an intro. Who wants to go first, Rhonda or David? I'll go. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is David Nichols, and I'm with Financial Aid Services. And I am in the compliance team, on the compliance team, and a senior consultant. And this May, I am celebrating 28 years with FAA. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> he happen? was a baby. <laughs> and it's that 28 years with Rhonda as well at the company. Have you both been here? Who was here first? David, I knew David. Um, I let's see. I must. I might have known him right before I started there. I've been with uh, FAS for eighteen years. Oh, okay. But cool. I knew David before I worked there. So yeah, we're so like we've each other twenty eight years. Yeah. Awesome. And then Rhonda, what do you do? Okay, so I'm Rhonda Daly Dolan uh, with Financial Aid Services and Genesis Software. And I am the sales director with the company, and I also work in the clients relations department. Um, I have a team that works with schools once they hire us, um, if it's a brand new school that needs help or a school that's transferring from another service or in-house. And then David and I travel the country together um, <laughs> to all different types of conferences, meeting all different types of schools. So we really have a good time and we're hoping today that we can spread our knowledge of what we hear in the industry or what we hear with our clients on how we can make admissions and financial aid BFFs. <laughs> I love that. Um, speaking of that, we're BFFs. So I am Jen Lyles of Beauty School's marketing group. I met Rhonda and David, I think we met years ago at AACS, probably didn't know each other super well back then, but we are on the conference circuit together and we have a blast. We yeah. are, we're in the corner laughing and taking selfies. It's almost like we're not working. It's really kind of neat. <laughs> it's so fun. And what I love is that we serve the same industry. So um, you guys work with, all, you know, all types of schools, but a big part of your clientele is beauty schools. Cool. So we're really excited to have you guys today with our beauty school peeps. Um, some exciting things that we're going to be talking about today include at the end, by the way, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Do you want to show what we're going to be giving? Oh, yes, about? yes, yes. So if anybody's brave enough to maybe ask a question or something, I've got this amazing, and I'm, I matched it too. I made sure I matched the color. Um, it's a Bluetooth speaker by JBL, and it gives off a really good sound. So I will be sending this to some lucky winner. And you can get entered. Yeah. Oh, can you ask a question? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So to be part of that drawing, you guys, we you have to do one of three things, and that is leave a comment or a compliment or a question in the chat. So we just want you to be brave, get in there, talk to each other. And, you know, if someone else has a question and we're talking about something else, I want you guys to be there in the chat talking with each other. 
Um, we also have special offers for you guys. Um, FAS and Genesis, they're going to have an offer for you. Our company is going to have an offer for you. And we will give that away or we'll talk about that here at the end of the webinar. Someone asked where we're from. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Where are you, David? Maine. Maine. And I am in Bonita Springs, Florida. But I'm from Massachusetts, you probably can tell. <laughs> Oh, we already we already got compliments, you guys. So my morale is great. Rhonda has an amazing tan. <laughs> I think my lighting is off. That's why I look so tan. I don't have a good light like Jen. You <laughs> always look tan. This is so funny. We should probably get into this webinar. We're six minutes. I know. Like, are they just going to be doing this the whole time? Um, which you know we are easily easily sidetracked. So let's chat about financial aid, you guys, before we get into the admissions portion. And you know, I have giant opinions about that. Let's just go over some basics. I know we have some newer schools on the call today, or maybe just some people that are like, we know we offer financial aid. We don't really know what that is. David, what is financial aid? <laughs> ah, good question. Title four, good old title four, financial aid. Well, you know, it's... um. We have the FAFSA that they start with to produce that ICER. And, you know, Pell Grants are income driven. So we have that wonderful thing called the EFC, and that's how we base the qualifications for Pell Grants. And then, of course, we have on top of that our direct student loans, SCOG, and various sources. So the basics are with a Pell Grant, that is basically free money. You don't have to pay free that money. Back. Correct. And it's based student on income. Yeah, student loans, you do have to pay back. Okay, awesome. And then student loans, don't have you don't have to start making payments until when? Uh, six months after you graduate. And right now, everyone is on a payment pause that's supposed to yeah. end. Who knows uh, when that's going to end of the summer. Yeah. Okay, so right now they're saying that pause is going to end in the summer. That's what they're saying right now. But that could be a whole other webinar. I know, I know, gosh. <laughs> That's a rabbit hole we don't want to go down right now. They right? keep kind of putting that off, right? It keeps yeah. it keeps changing. Um, okay, that sounds good. Uh, talk a little bit about clock hour programs and how they qualify for financial aid. Sure. Um, so a lot of the schools on the webinar today are probably clock hour. And to talk about that a little bit, Jen, um, to qualify for financial aid, the program has to be at least 300 hours, but that would be prorated loans only. Pell Grants start at 600 hours and up. Okay. Yeah. So, you so again, if you have a 300-hour NAIL program, you can get a student loan for that. You Correct. cannot get a Pell Grant for that. Correct. Pell Grants will start at 600 hours and up. Okay, awesome. And explain to us what the difference between an independent and a dependent student is. Uh, independent, student, well, independent student will go by age and um, that was what makes them independent, of course. Um, once you get into loans, there's a little bit more flexibility with that. You know, say if you have an independent, I mean, excuse me, a dependent student, they might have a parent attempting a plus loan. If that gets denied, then that dependent student can go on for additional unsubsidized loans. So there's okay. a whole little intricacy part of that. But yeah, independent and dependent is based on age. It's based on age. And then also you can be under a certain age. And if you have children or you're married, that also changes the status. Yeah. yeah. Usually in verification process, if there's something like that, um, that, that information gets looked at. So it's determined if they're going to be dependent or independent. Fantastic. We actually have our first question sure. in the chat. Can you explain subsidized and unsubsidized? Okay. I'm um, trying to remember back from my direct loan days, but that's exactly it. The interest rate on the subsidized loans are subsidized while that school, I mean, excuse me, while that student is in school. Um, mm -hmm. Unsubsidized, that interest starts accruing after the disbursements are made. So even while that student is in school for unsubsidized, that interest is not subsidized. So that's going to be accruing. But on the subsidized, that is paused until they go into repayment. So there's no interest accruing on that. Okay, awesome. And then let's talk a little bit about what qualifies a student for financial aid. Um, do schools need to be accredited for starters? You yes. Do. Yes. Students need yes. to be accredited. 
there's a list, uh, the Department of Ed puts out a list of recognized accrediting agencies. So um, when a school opens up, they first have to have state approval and then they work towards a, an accrediting body depending on their type of school and, and what accreditor they wanna work with. And then if it is approved um, by the Department of Ed, once they receive that actual physical letter uh, stating that they have been accredited and it will break down um, what programs they've been accredited for, if they're clock hour or credit or quarter credit. And then um, at that point, they can apply to the Department of Ed, but they do have to start with, um, they call it the two-year rule, where they have to have at least two years of a continuing student um, in their programs when they first apply to the Department of Ed. And we- You can't just open department. up your doors for a couple, for a couple years and be you know, like- you, kinda, you have to prove, it. yeah, you have to prove that you've got, you know, sustainable, you know, yeah. you've got programs yeah. that students are in and you at least have one, even if it's a small school, it can be two students, but right. as long as you have a student in a seat for a two year period, um, then it would qualify to be applied uh, to be able to offer Title IV. Awesome. If you are a school right now that does, is going through the accreditation process, you do not have financial aid, you probably need students. You probably need to talk to someone like me because we can help you <laughs> get leave yeah. so exactly. that you can get in there. I also have tips for schools on that because the fact is you are, you're competing with other schools in, in your area, right? That, that do yeah. offer financial aid. And that can be really, really hard. Um, we are getting lots of questions about financial aid in the chat. Let me go back to yeah. one here um, to verify if we had an instructor program for 500 hours, could you use a student loan through FAFSA for that? For 500 hour program, it would qualify for student loans only. And once again, you know, that program has to be approved by accrediting body and state. Yep get it on the e-car with the Department of Ed. Um, because it is a program that's under 600 hours, it is considered a short-term program. So that program would have to be in place for at least a year, Jen, because mm -hmm. the school has to um, prove completion and placement. Oh yeah, 70% 70 70 at least, yeah. So, you know, those students have to be there for a while, you know, mm -hmm. be out of school so they have those rates. But yes, to answer that question, the 500 hour program would qualify for direct loans. Perfect. And, you know, we talked a second ago about clock hours, right? So some schools are on clock hour, some are on semester based. Can you let us, someone actually has a question about that. Jessica asks, what is the main difference between clock hour programs and colleges and universities that are semester based, specifically with, with financial aid? Um, well, a traditional college is more what I call semester or term based. Um, you know, typically that has a fall start um, that might go from say September to December, and then, you mm -hmm. know, spring, December to May. And um, that progression is, you know, credit based. And a lot of times they'll d use what we call um, different EFC charts because it's based on the amount of credits that are being attempted. And there's all these different charts, Jen, you know, if you're a full time, three fourths time, half time, less than a half time. With clock hour schools, because you're a clock hour school, regardless if you have students going full time or half time, you're always using that um, full time Pell Grant chart. Okay. Okay. Awesome. This, by the way, is a great reason to work with a company like you. Like before I go too far, um, what is a reason to work with a company like Financial Aid Services? I mean, I'll let Rhonda talk about that in more detail, but for me, it's just all the ins and outs, like what I'm talking about, like the 300, 600, you know, yeah. what programs qualify. And then just there's so many regulations. The regulations, Jen, are always changing. Yeah. So staying on top of that is a real, real big job. And, you know, we really help with that. Yeah, a lot of it's kind of hard to understand. I mean, when you look at the regulations or you're reading the calls for comments and you're like, oh, what are they talking about? So obviously we have um, a lot of experts in our company that have had many, many years of experience, but also are trained thoroughly. So they're always up to date with the new regulations or compliance situations. So when a school reaches out to a third party service, they really have that company there for the knowledge, expertise, and the training, and to make sure the school understands this is, you know, these are the policies you have to make, you, school has their own policies as well, but financial aid policies, and you have to follow these, and these are the guidelines, and sometimes I feel like they can call us, and we can 
talk it through in a little more layman's terms, a little easier to understand than than the CFR 24, you know, that type yeah. of thing. So and if, and if help. are looking at a third party service or whether it's us or another third party service, or they really want to ask, you know, do you have a compliance team? Are you guys big on regulations? Do you have webinars? Do you have um, email blasts when a regulation changes? So it's something to check with, you know, when you're looking at servicers to make sure that they're, you know, diving into all this fun stuff. So <laughs> the mo most important thing is communication. Yeah. When somebody wants to work with a third party servicer, it's really going to be customer service and communication because the success of a business or a personal or the, or the students, everything is about communication and getting an answer or having somebody guide you through something. So you definitely want to look at somebody or a company that has a good reputation where they know that they can call when they need help. So just, is that is that how people communicate with you guys when a new regulation comes out when something changes is there an email blast that goes out do you have weekly webinars how are you updating your schools Yeah we have webinars we have email blasts and like Jen when a new regulation comes out it might not be quite set in stone yet so it comes to our compliance department our compliance team and we have all these big meetings and powwows and you know, try to make sure we're all on the same page and understanding it because they can be, as people know, pretty gray at times. And, you know, and we do circle back to the Department of Ed. We know lots of reps, um, lots of policymakers, you know, we circle back and say, okay, we need clarification on this. And, um, but yeah, it's an ever changing process. And I noticed someone in the chat said, you know, what, why work with third party services? You know, they said, makes life easier. That's what we try to do is make the life easier on the school. We try to take some of that burden off the school. So, you know, with a lot of the back end processing, so they have time to meet with the students and spend more time consulting with them, maybe helping them out. So we want at, at financial aid reps to be very customer service, service oriented, right? Like really kind of yeah. meeting with that student, meeting with the parents. Mm -hmm. You guys do the processing on the back end and you are working with the FA reps directly. Correct. Yeah, but they, and people, and people ask us like when they when a school is hiring a new FA, they're like, well, you know, do, do they have to have financial aid experience? Do they, you know, what do we do? It would be great if they did. But the most important thing is, can they communicate with the students or pe people? Do they like people? Mm -hmm. You want them to be a friendly uh, person that you know people feel comfortable to come to as well, and that can deal with situations because students are nervous or they're stressed out. They're like, oh my gosh, am I going to take this loan on? Am I not? or yeah, what is financial, yeah. you know, all those type of things where a student's a little overwhelmed, especially a young student, you know, somebody coming right out of high school that they're supposed to be adults, but they're really not. And so they need guidance. And I think that the FA, you know, has to have some calming effect as well, but, but wants them to be friendly and easy to talk to because they are really there to help and guide that student through. And again, using a service that we take most of the burden off so they're not so frazzled with all the things that have to happen with financial aid, but at least they can sit down with the student and say, all right, this is exciting. Let's see what you, you know, what kind of grants you're going to sure. get. What, you know, yeah. Like that. And that <laughs> is something I want to delve into with you guys. Let's, let's hold that for a second. Let's go back to the questions that are more very financial aid based, but I have no idea how to answer. <laughs> um, like full disclosure, y'all, like I don't usually do prep calls with my coach because usually we bring it. These two, I was like, <gasps> financial aid. I don't even know how I'm going to speak on this. <laughs> and then they said the same thing. They were like, admission. Yeah, well, like we don't really do with admissions, but I mean, we do a little bit, but no. So it's, it's kind of fun. I think, I think we feed off of each other. We I both think we that, yeah, exactly. When we were prepping, we had, we had some really good ways to even talk about how they can work together. Again, that's coming. Let's jump into more questions that are directly focused on financial aid. Um, Someone had one about ATV. Is that someone you guys can, something you can probably answer if I ask the question? Um, I'd have to look a little bit more into that. You know, there's something called ATB and career pathways, you know, ATB's yeah. ability to benefit. Um, yeah. I myself am, am a little shaky on that. I'd probably have to circle back to the office if it was a real um, extensive question regarding that. Okay, perfect. So the question is students who take an ATB and do and do a career pathway to be FA eligible, does the student do a career pathway in any language? Hmm, that I am not sure. Okay, 
Okay, no problem. Um, maybe we can circle back and answer it on a follow up. Yeah, David, are you able? Someone asked you if you're able to repeat how many hours of program can be to be eligible for loans and Pell. Sure. So a loan eligible program starts at 300 hours. So 300 hours and up, and Pell grants start at 600 hours and up. So you know, a program between 300, 599 is just going to qualify for prorated loans, and then 600 and up will qualify for um, your Pell grants. Okay, because she said that also it's based on a program and not payment periods, correct? Correct. It is based on the overall program hours. Yes. Perfect. Um, mm -hmm. Our beauty school 600 hour esthetician class was approved by Colorado 18 months ago. When can we start applying for accreditation? Accreditation or Title IV? Accreditation. accreditation. You guys know on accreditation? So accreditation, um, I would think you'd start getting that approval, you know, right away through. Yeah, if they're already out. accredited, they'd be adding a program. I mean, I don't know the whole logistics with accrediting. Sure. I just, um, right. But I would think, right, they'd send something in. And right. then someone even asked more on the, like, accrediting agencies. I know NACUS is one that a lot of, uh, I would say the majority of beauty schools use. COE yeah, is another, COE is another one. one. And then the yeah. middle states is now becoming very popular. Starting to become popular. Yeah. I, I mean, we don't have to have an accreditation webinar, but I know that people like that one specifically because it's ACCSC too. Yes. I know Aveda schools, some of them ACCSC. I think it's so those are the top yeah. ones. Yeah. Jen, to circle back to that question, I think I saw it coming up in chat that they may have been asking about. Um, that program, that aesthetics program approved and getting it Title IV. <clears throat> so if you have state approval and accreditation approval, we can you could go ahead and apply to the Department of Ed. You'll you have yeah. both those approvals and get that approved on your e-card to offer financial aid. So as long as you have state and accreditation, you know, you should be good to go to get that application into the Department of Ed. Right. Uh, what are the regulations or compliance standards regarding giving discounts to cash paying students versus financial aid enrollment? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, tuition discounting off the top of my head. I just know, or, you know, just thinking some of the basics, you know, that does have to be offered across the board to all students. You can't just offer it to one cohort, like, financial aid recipients versus non-financial aid recipients. You know, that tuition discount has to be offered across the board to all students. Okay. You know, that's how I remember things. Awesome. Uh, thank you for going through those questions for us. What are some challenges you guys right now that some of your clients are facing? Financial aid officers um turnover <laughs> turnover <laughs> like the top one i you know i don't want to be honest there's a lot of i mean we, we get our emails at work and it's like every day it's like oh so there's a new financial aid officer at this one and if they use a servicer we will fully train that new staff member because that can be very stressful for a school owner if they have someone who's great and then they you know go on maternity leave or they they, you know, decide to move to another state or something like that. Um, if they use a servicer, they usually can have a little gap there where the servicer can help and kind of walk them through making sure that they're not losing payments. You bring up the gap. Like Let's talk about yeah. that. Your FA rep quits today. Your new girl doesn't start until a week and a half from now. Does that mean you can't enroll? No, no. It just means that you need to call your servicer and say, please help me. <laughs> um, you know, because... Basically, you know, when the student comes in, they need to be notified of, of what the financial aid offerings are. So that's a, the aid offer. And then if the student does enroll and the owner, say, wants to or somebody at the school wants to make sure that they get set up for their payments, we can walk them through because we provide the schools with the software where they do create the aid offer and create the request for us to draw down funds. So all of the school's ISOs are in the system already. So we always recommend to like cross train staff too, or, um, you know, even if an owner never does any of it, but for them to know what we do for them, that way, yep. if they get in a situation like this, um, that they can call upon us and we can kind of guide them through how to get through the tough time until that new person starts. 
Awesome. That sounds great. Um, let's talk about presenting options to uh, financing options. Once you're an FA rep and you, the ICER comes in and you're meeting with someone and you're saying, this is what you qualify for. I want to talk a little bit about the presentation. So let me just talk about it from an admissions perspective. And this is what I hear all the time. Okay. If you are FA and you are on this call, this is not to beat you up specifically. I am talking way more generally. You're probably the exception to the rule and you're the life of the party at the table. Um, generally, FA people are not. So here is what I hear. <laughs> Oops, I said it. Okay. This is what I hear, y'all. A lead comes into the system, y'all, to get someone to fill out a form, schools are spending tens of thousands of dollars a month just to get someone to fill out a form. They are putting a lot into their SEO strategy. They are spending money on Google ads. They are putting money on social media. They're buying leads from beauty schools directory. They're doing all the things to try to get a lead. Someone fills out a form. That's a big deal. You're like, woo, all right, yeah. man. <laughs> big deal. And generally schools convert. I like to see schools convert at around 15%. Okay. That means for every hundred people that fill out that form, 15 of those should enroll. That means 85 of them will not. So already it's hard enough to get someone to fill out a form. And now the enrollment on that is like, er. So here's what happens. You finally get someone and admissions is doing a great job reaching out and they get them on the phone and they get them in for a tour. Let's stop there. About 50% of people even show up for the tour. So already our numbers keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, now the lead's in front of me and I made them cry, you know, all the things. We had a great time. I walked them around the school. They smelled the shampoo bottle. Like these people are ready to enroll. And I have to hand them off to my FA rep very carefully and be like, don't screw this up. No, that FA rep, you want that to be your BFF. You at least have a good <laughs> relationship. There's <laughs> such a war in schools between admissions and financial aid. And this they is should why be buddies because they can root for each other and, and help friends. each other. Best friends. And here's the thing is that a lot of times schools have FA reps that are so good at paperwork, that are so good at details, and they're not really so great at client-facing client communication, that yeah. once that kid gets in there, the sale is gone. And y'all have literally screwed up all the money and time the whole school just put in. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. We hear that, Jen. You know, like you said, they're having the tour, they're doing all that, they're feeling so good and excited about this. And then it's like they go to the financial aid office and it can be overwhelming. And it all depends on how it's presented to the student. The student could come out of there, you know, going into that office, ready to sign up tomorrow. They could come out, you know, crying and saying, this isn't for me, you know, because it's, it all depends on how that's presented. And a lot of times, you know, depending on the cost of the school and you explain what financial aid is and what they might qualify for. If a student doesn't qualify for Pell Grants, they might only qualify for loans. Well, you know, what if there's a gap between what they can get in financial aid or those loans and what the tuition yeah. is? So that financial aid person has to, you know, have the um, know-how to say, okay, look, you know, there are other means out there to bridge that gap. You know, we might work with a um, TFC Corporation. Yeah, for yeah, example. TFC or Unisa. All right, there's a lot of yeah. companies out there that can help, help. You know, bridge that gap where there yeah. might be something not covered by FA or those, you know, loans. So, but you bring up a really great point about the presentation, and that is that you know they sit across from you, and let's say they do not qualify for Pell, but they do for student loans. We can't come off like, oh, well. So you didn't qualify for this, but you Sorry, did. No, pal. Sorry, <laughs> no free money. Sorry, no, no free money for you. Yeah. Um, what I love is something more like great news. You qualified for. Student. Yeah, I, no, because it's a lower interest rate than if they had to go to a bank or, you know, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great to have that opportunity to at least be able to get the federal loans. And let's, let's from the jump. This is what admissions is really good at. Admissions is really, really good at lowering the anxiety of a student or a lead. Financial aid needs to do the same. So I would, I would presentation-wise, great news. You qualify for student loans. Let me first explain what that is. 
that is money you don't even have to start paying back till six months after you graduate. Like if we could just come up with better phrases that put this in a positive light, these kids are so scared. And we really can scare them off sometimes by our facial expressions of, ooh, this, this well, is there's also, because it does get overwhelming, but there's lots of um, products or ads or documents that you can have easily visible to provide to a student that can explain the different products of the Pell Grant and the NSEP. So that way, they, you know, they can decipher it a little bit and be like, okay, it's not that bad, you know, but yeah. there is yeah. a lot of marketing material that is um, easier to follow than just looking at a regulation. So um, I think the more that you can provide your students, I mean, again, they're, they're either coming out of high school or maybe they're changing careers or maybe yeah. they're with their parent and their parent never went to college. So they don't even understand you know, the acronyms, it's very overwhelming. Oh, you have a FAFSA, then you have an ICER. And they're like, what are you talking about? Let's but, chat about yeah. that, Rhonda. You know, yeah. that is something I'm very passionate about. Okay, y'all, in another life, I was a marketing director of a beauty school. And I'll be honest with you, in our CRM, we had 176 email templates. Okay, I put 176 email templates in there. They were full of testimonials. These are the points of differences our, of our school. These are the awards we've won. This is a little bit about our staff. Like I had every possible email template to help market this school. And then we would put out these marketing campaigns all the time. And we were coming up with really great marketing ideas for like blast text. And we had like one template for financial aid. And it was very general. It was like, um, financial aid is available to those who qualify. <laughs> yeah, right. And then they're like, well, what is financial? Well, what does I mean, that mean? How do you qualify? You and yeah. so this is what's lacking, you guys. If you want to ask me what is lacking on beauty schools, it is transparency with helping someone who doesn't understand financial aid through the process. Y'all know in admissions, it's the number one question you're asked. How much is tuition? How am I going to pay for this? It's the number one question on everyone's mind. And all we say is, um, oh, we actually have a financial aid rep that's going to sit down with you and help. Do, will they? Like, is that all you got? Right. And, you know, that is, and we don't mean to generalize that because I am seeing some of the feedback on this call today. I'm sure there are schools that have wonderful, you know, communications sure. between the FA and admissions. I just saw someone talking about it, how they do this spiel and they come out so knowledgeable. And I mean, that's great. Oh, maybe I love that. Share, maybe they can share in the chat or with you at some point, Jen, you know, maybe what that school does with their FA reps and their admissions, because it sounds like they have something, you know, going really well. And I'm almost wondering if maybe um, some schools will do um, like an FA night and they'll do it together. They'll do it with admissions and FA. And like you guys are alluding at, you know, those two yeah. are BFFs and, you know, they can make it fun too. And that's probably what this school was talking about, how they have a really good rapport with Yeah, because I think if the financial aid, um, the financial aid officer maybe has like some really cool literature or something like that, that actually admissions can have. So when they're sitting with that student, the student's so excited and they're like, oh, here's a little bit of blurb about financial aid and then make your appointment with Mary and maybe, you know, having Mary's schedule accessible so you know and get that appointment made and then the student is you know getting a little bit of information to read on before they get in there so that they feel like oh I have a little bit of knowledge or can you explain what this is then yeah. they're more into it you know what I mean they they've they've invested in it a little bit so or you know even just some really great videos short videos on your financial aid page on your website of like what is FAFSA what's the difference between a Pell grant and a student loan how do you, like, what do I do once I get my school code? What do I do with this? What's my next step? Um, or what about, e oh, there's one of my dogs. I know, it's just so cute. <laughs> what about even giving ammo, right? Like whether it's collateral or a video to a student or, or rather a lead who doesn't have a relationship, a very good relationship with their parent, but they're a dependent student. It's like, how, or or maybe the, they don't even know how to ask their parents for the fact that they're going to have to be on this app. Yeah, they're nervous. They don't want to put their information. Very yeah. personal yeah. information. Y'all, I was talking with my friend Blake yesterday. And I mean, 
were sitting in my living room on, on, on my chairs. And I was asking, I was like, you had a student loan. Did your parents not pay for your college? He's like, they paid for all of it, except my last semester. I had to take out a loan for that. And he goes, you know, what's crazy is I had to ask them how much money they had in their checking account. And he was like, this was 15 years ago. He's like, it was the most embarrassed. He's like, I had secondhand embarrassment for my parents knowing how much they had in there, how much they didn't have in their checking account. Right. He was like, I, he's like, they told me. So I was typing it in and I looked at them and I said, that's all. <laughs> and I, which, wow, that's a lot. Um, but I'm thinking he's not alone. There yeah. are other kids or right. who don't have that relationship with their parent to get that information. How are we better like preparing these kids to have that conversation with their family. I feel like there are things collateral wise, video wise, customer service wise, we can be doing because the fact is when they get home with your folder, right? If you give someone like a folder and it's, yeah. Filled, and they're like, Oh yeah. There's a bunch of stuff in your school about that. You know what they're looking at over and over again, the financial aid page. And if you don't have good information on that, like you're going to lose them. And I just feel like we are falling short, not giving students leads enough information ahead of time about financial aid. Um, can we talk really quick, you guys, about how better we can work with admissions? ICERs, right? Like someone, is this something they can easily pull every day and they need to be talking to their admissions team about, you know, what's coming in? Yeah, so the I, once a student fills out a FAFSA with a specific school code, within 24 hours, the school or their servicer will get those ICERs in. So if they do use a servicer, usually the software that they're provided, like ours, um, then you know within 24 hours, the ICERs are in there. So an FA could log in and either do a date range or whatever, but they could see all the ICERs that came in, and some of them they might not recognize because they're like, oh, I'm, I've never heard of this student or whatever. And then they can obviously follow up or, or provide that to admissions and have admissions follow up with those. Because sometimes students will... Like, I think you can put, I don't even remember now if it's 10. Like I can't remember. 10, oh, five school or school 10 school. Uh, Pell IDs on an, on an application. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes students might be putting multiple on there because they're all in that area or something. You know, so yeah, so there's definitely. Guys, uh, that's a lead. Hello. Yeah. You want to know the hottest type of lead out there? Someone who maybe didn't go to your website and fill out a form, but they grabbed your school code and did their FAFSA. Like, <laughs> call them. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, immediately. Well, they yeah. Got the wrong number. Oops, but then you have them at please. So there you go. Yeah, someone just <laughs> someone just chimed in. It is up to 10. Oh, 10. Okay. It's uh, been so long. I should know because I filled out both of my children's fastest. Uh, they were supposed to, but I did it. I shouldn't I shouldn't admit that, but um I know that it and, and you know what, and it's not easy. So that's another thing. I feel bad for financial aid officers because students come in and then they're stressed out because they're like, I don't know if I can fill this out or I don't know how. And I think the more knowledge with the FA, if they do have a computer maybe at the school or outside the office or something where the student can sit down and fill it out, or maybe if they have questions and they need guidance, it's nice if the financial aid officer can be there like it's okay. You know, that this I question means that. this. Because yeah. it's it is when you look at some of the questions, you're like, what? You know, it's, yeah. it can be a little overwhelming. And Jen, something I want to mention, and a lot of the school owners and CEOs are going to get a letter this week from FSA. And it's actually a warning letter in regards to the new simpli simplification process with FAFSA. I personally, I'm not sure how much more simplified this is going to be. I'm a little worried about that. And for the Department of Ed to release a warning letter, you know, that has me a little nervous, but I do want to mention to everyone on this webinar tonight, you know, please watch for that letter. Make sure you're up to date on these trainings that the Department of Ed or servicers may be doing in the future as we get close to that new FAFSA, because that's going to launch in December of this coming year for the 24-25 award year. And it's supposed to simplify the process, but we're hearing mm -hmm. that, you know, I don't know how much more it's going to help with that. So people just need to be aware of that, that this is coming down the um, pipe. And, you know, this just came out yesterday and, you know, we got a sneak peek at it and it's going out. This email blast is going out this week to owners and CEOs of schools. Okay. So the FAFSA, it's important to stay on top of that and the changes yeah. that are going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for bringing that up. Someone did mention that they just got theirs. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's going to be a whole that's going to be a whole other training thing for the FA. 
is, you know, learning that new process to be able to help the student or, you know, guide them in the right direction. So future trainings on that are going to be very important. Yeah, that's great. So I want to answer one of the questions in the chat, and it's about regulations on following up with ICER leads. Let me tell you how I understand it from a marketing perspective. You cannot opt someone into um, regular communication without them opting themselves into it, meaning on your website, right, there's a form that says I'm opting into texts and, and calls and yeah, emails, yeah, 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 and yeah. you can put them on a list, right, where they're constantly getting called, emailed, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I, what I learned from a compliance team um, previously in my job, and this, again, like double check with your compliance team is that you're allowed to reach out one time. Um, it doesn't mean they're, opt they can, they can have an option to say, you know, like, I don't want to receive anymore. It doesn't mean you can keep reaching out. It means, yes. Hey, I work at ABC beauty school. We received information that you filled out your FAFSA and entered our school code. Um, the next step to enrollment here is, a, you know, is, is a tour yeah. and you, you can chat about that. No, I made a mistake. Okay, fine. You know, yeah, don't you can't CRM, yeah. keep, keep them off the list. But generally I will tell you what I hear from other admissions people is that these are really, really great leads because they, I mean, again, they went on your school website and unless they like accidentally typed in, you know, which is possible, a school code wrong. These are people you should be reaching out to. I want admissions and, and financial aid regular to be talking. So that said, you've had a tour. The next step to enrollment is financial aid. And if that person goes home, your FA rep needs to know. I have met with these people in the last two weeks. I need you to help me. Do you want to reach out to them? Do you want me to reach out to them? We need to get them enrolled for this. Guys, these kids need, de these kids need deadlines. They need follow-up. I don't care who it's from. They need follow-up. Um, FA reps need to know what admissions goals are. And this is something I'm passionate about because I worked in a school and constantly saw admissions reps getting beat up on. This is your goal for the month. And if you don't get it, you're dead to me. And if you do get it, you get it celebrated for a second. And then it's a fresh new month the next month. What oh I goodness. want to see is FA to know those goals and take ownership and celebrate. Um, if you're an admissions person on here, every time, every time they have an FA appointment, give them a $5 Starbucks gift card, like do anything to keep them happy. There needs to be some sort of synergy between these two departments because it's a shared goal. It is not admissions job to reach start goals alone. It's not, it takes a whole campus and we, and you guys know it takes financial aid, but yeah, I mean, it is organization too. Like I said, if, if you can share your availability, um, or I think it would make it easier in, on admissions if they knew the availability schedule of the financial aid department. So that way, if they do have a student that's really interested, really yes. excited, get that appointment made. And I think I I have one. I have something too, David. I had printed just like one page, but there's some you know there's there's documents that you can provide admissions to hand out to a student. Um, you know, just letting them know what financial aid is and stuff. So it gives them that excitement, but then kind of gets them to make that next appointment. Because I think setting the appointment is the, the first step and then yeah. keeping the appointment and then having it go through. I think that's yeah. great. Um, Jim, I just liked an idea. Someone had um, typed in that the financial aid person, when they get in these ICERs, they'll send an email to that student, you know, regardless, and they CC the admissions department. So that's another good way of doing oh, yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I, I love think all this input. <laughs> I really think just working together, right? Because some, yeah. some admissions people are very, they have ownership over that lead. Maybe they really had such great rapport with them and they both had kids the same age and they just really got along. And once the ICER comes in, maybe it's the admissions person saying, hey, when that comes in, let me know. I want to reach back out to them and I'll schedule an appointment for you. Like, I don't care how you do it, y'all. You just need to be in communication with each other. And for someone who has not filled out a form, because someone asked this too, who should be reaching out to them, FA or admissions, if they did, if the ICER comes in, but they, they're not in the system as a lead, I think that's admissions job. Admissions knows how to, from the jump, build rapport better. They are trained on that. They are better at customer service in that way. It's not saying FA is bad. It's just saying the next step to enrollment is, it's a tour of your school. So it really needs to be owned by admissions um, in that case. But regardless, as long as you guys have some sort of synergy and you're like, hey, this is this is what I'm planning to do and I'm going to reach out to them or 
that person ever, they still haven't done their FAFSA. Can you reach out to that? There just needs to be communication. Yep. Communication is key. Definitely. I think that is really, really what we're missing. Um, I, someone wrote, ISA recipients are entered into our CRM, are sent a FAFSA received email template. I love that. I think that's great. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. CRMs, y'all. Really yeah, I was going to say, what's CRM? <laughs> yeah, there's some good that's ones good. out there. Um, by the way, a CRM is where you will house your leads and you will work them, right? So that's where you can text from, email from, keep track of your calls. And you, there's usually a calendar integrated. And so if you're an admissions rep and the next step to enrollment is a financial aid appointment, you can usually in the CRM have shared calendars and you can make that appointment for other people. And so there's a lot of good CRMs out there. I recommend you you look at them all. I always recommend Lead Squared, Campus Login, Edlumina, Verity IQ. What am I missing? What is another one? Yeah, those are the those are the ones I would have said as well. Those are so. the major ones. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of CRMs out there. Demo them, see what you're looking for. There's also not a perfect one. Like they all glitch sometimes. Um, <laughs> That's that that is life. So yeah, we want to be working together to do this. Um, let me ask you guys a question about how separate should FA and admissions be? Do you guys know about that? There's some sort of laws around that, right? Like, can the departments be merged? Can they not be? Does there have to be rules on that? Yeah, they can't be merged. I know that, David. You might know a little bit more from the compliance side. You know, just a little bit more. Um, yeah, they can't be merged and. If you have someone admit in admissions, you know, there's a little bit of that separation of function or a lot of separation of function, you know, that admissions person shouldn't be, you know, processing um, any of the disbursements or anything like that. So there does have to be, you know, a fine cutoff there as far as, you know, processing um, with the admissions and the FA. So you just have to watch that a little bit. Um, and it doesn't mean you can't like not say basics, right? It no, really no, right. They, they should have some knowledge. I mean, but they don't have to be an expert, but they want to at least let that student know that there is that option if they are eligible and then to guide them where to go fill out that FAFSA. And this what this is really, is. Yeah. let's talk about that for a right, second. Because that, really, that, that admit, I was just going to say, Jen, you know, with that admissions rep, you know, they shouldn't be getting into, um, FA specific loans amount, yeah. Pell Grants, what right. they might qualify right. for, but they could say, you know, you start with filling out your FAFSA, you know, you're going to, you, we might be doing a school, school tour, we're going to introduce you to the financial aid rep, or someone on here had mentioned they do the tour of, with the student, with the admissions and the FA rep. So I love that. We're yeah. all on the same page, so yeah. that was a good idea, but yeah, you have to, that admissions person shouldn't really be getting into too much of the FA which again, doesn't mean you shouldn't know anything. Like it, no. it, I really feel like as an admissions rep, you need to know what a Pell Grant is. You need to know what a student loan is, right? You need to be able to say, yes, we all, we do have various options. I'm not, I don't know what you qualify for. I'm going to tell you the first step is to go to, you know, create your FSA ID, do your FAFSA application. The great news is we actually have a rep that's going to sit down with you, walk you through that if you need help, you know, and walk you through exactly what you're eligible for. I love admissions also to have a list of, of industry scholarships. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, right. Give them those other options or oh, there might be in-state scholarships or whatever the school might offer, you know, VA. there's a lot out there. You got yeah. beauty changes lives has a ton. My company, yeah. you know, beauty schools directory. We have, um, we have different scholarship competitions throughout the year. There's lots of scholarship. I think and AACS has a scholarship too. Yep. So yeah. yeah. So I would, you know, just at least have a list and be giving it to people. The fact is, this is the number one question leads have is how I'm going to, how am I going to pay for school? And if the only thing we know how to say is financial aid is available to those who qualify, you're missing it. We really have to be more specific and help people, which is why I love videos. Um, I listened to a great podcast on this earlier today. I had sent it to, to Rhonda as well. Um, I liked it too. <laughs> wasn't it, right? I think it was like Mission and Missions was the name of the podcast, yeah. but he had an FA woman on there. They were talking more, I think, higher ed, like four-year schools. Yes. Yes. They were talking about taking out loans for like $300,000. I was like, what? I, I, know, I know. That is not beautiful. <laughs> It's not beauty schools. Um, that said, I yeah. found that podcast to be so fascinating. Who did the um, podcast? 
let me let me see what it was. Um, they were talking about um about creating videos and making things simple. Okay, yeah, it was okay. good, David. You'd like it. it it's it called like, mission, it. mission Admissions. I I saw it on Spotify, but I originally saw it on LinkedIn. Mission Admissions with Jeremy Tears, T I E R S. Okay. And his latest episode was with it's time to fix how colleges talk about financial aid. And he had a guest on there and she was phenomenal. I mean, it, it was a 30 minute podcast. I thought it was one of the best episodes I've listened right. to. Um, and it was just timely because we were having this webinar and it showed up yesterday and I was like, this is so good. But Gen Z loves a video. They, <laughs> they just love a video and like make it fun. Mm hmm Make it I like videos. I'm not Gen Z, but I still like videos. You are becoming Gen Z. <laughs> I like you are that. definitely becoming Gen Z. I think. Yeah. You, um. Yeah. Do do we have questions, guys? If you I, we have ten minutes left, so if there's more questions, I want you to type them in the chat. Yeah, I'm going to answer a question, Jen. Um, someone had asked earlier what was the completion and placement rate for those short-term programs. So that's anything under 600. So 600, you're fine. 599 under that has to have completion and placement rates of at least 70%. I know somebody had asked that. Perfect. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. A lot of people are asking about that podcast. There you go. Is there any default management company you would recommend when offering student loans? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since most of these companies have done much, but I know that a lot of our schools work with Pantheon, Champions, mm -hmm. and then is it WISS, David? W-I-S-S? -S? Yeah, yep, yes. Yeah, so okay. Champions, W-I-S-S, -S, and then Pantheon. Those are the three that, you know, from, from our clients, um, we see on their e-car. Because, you know, we as a servicer help the schools with their e-cars too, with updates or adding, um, default management school uh, companies onto their e-cars. So those are the three that that come to my mind. Yeah, that's awesome. my primary function at FAS. I know, that's what David does every e day. E-car updates, so. Adding programs or getting schools approved. <laughs> yeah. so. um, you guys, we are down that's to a few coming. minutes. I want to go over our, our offers. We have special offers for people who are on the call today. So really quick, what would you guys like to offer any new clients? Okay, so if there's any schools out there that are brand new, maybe we're processing in-house or, or not happy with who they're working with and are thinking of changing. Um, so we have two sides of our business. The financial aid services side is that we're a third-party service or consultant, so we could do all the back-end processing. So if a school from this uh, webinar was to sign up with us, we can give a free month of processing. So they would pay an upfront retainer, but then the next month would be free. So that could be worth a lot of money. Well, not a lot of money, depending on the size of the school. And then on our Genesis School Management software side, we have a SIS um, that tracks grades, attendance, uh, reports for accrediting, as well as state, as well as some of the IPED reports and Department of Ed reports. So if you needed a school management software and you were on this webinar and you purchase it, um, I'm able to take 500 off the price of the software. So. Lovely. Thank you. So this is the first time we've had our I guess it's fun to give away. Give something <laughs> away. So that's awesome. Do you guys want to go ahead and add in the chat if you're able to um your information so people can email you if they want to take advantage of that and set up a call with you? Sure. Um we want to do something similar, which we've never done. We're going to give away 25 free leads to anyone who joins Beauty Schools Directory. So that has a value of $500. We want to give you free leads off the jump. Um, another option, especially for people who are already working with us, is we recently launched a new program called Web Conversion Pro. It gets you more leads from your website. And the schools that are using it love it. Rhonda knows because there are actually a couple of her clients that she yeah. works oh, with me. Yeah. That's They're why we're BFFs because we work together. Because we work exactly, exactly. In communication. Um, <laughs> so we are excited about that. Uh, we're going to give you it's five hundred dollar value your first month free with a contract. Five hundred well. is the lucky number today. <laughs> that is great. I'm going to go ahead also and put in the chat my email address. We would love to fit up, uh, to to set up calls with you guys. 
And you know what? We're also hitting the road because Rhonda and I are going to Florida. We're taking Florida. on Miami. <laughs> We're taking on Miami. Y'all, we have reservations <laughs> at a very elite sushi place. I <laughs> like sushi. Celebrity. Celebrities eat there. I, I know. Like, I heard it's probably going to be a Kardashian. I, I don't know. Um, I'm very excited about this. So we're, but Rhonda and I, uh, we are going to go visit a bunch of beauty schools in the Miami area next week. Um, and we would love to come to a city near you. Yeah, we need another city to visit. So let we us know. <laughs> we're a great time. Uh, we're going to do our giveaway. You guys ready for the giveaway? Here's okay, the are you able to do I that? am scrolling up and down the chat. <laughs> Closing my eyes, I'm just going to end up stopping it on Tiffany Corey. Are you on here? Tiffany Corey. Congratulations, Tiffany. Tiffany. You won. You All you have to do. Dance. Dance. Oh, here she the is. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. You, you. Are you you want to lift your speaker. I will put this in the mail for you. So exciting. Um, guys, next month, our webinar, I'm so excited. Spec, also known as the Salon Professional Academy, T-Spa, um, their, their corporate admissions director, Becky, is going to be joining me for a webinar next month. I'm really excited about that one. And we're going to be talking about all things having to do with hiring admissions, how much you should pay them, all that stuff. We're going to get into that. So be, uh, be on the lookout for that email. Be on the lookout tomorrow for the recording of this. Um, and if you guys have ideas in the future for webinars you want to see, you let us know. Um, can we also plug your event coming up? For yeah. Your oh, yeah. So as a third-party servicer, I mean, I think most third-party services do this, but we host every year a seminar for our clients and they come in from all over the country. Um, and this year it's May the 4th be with you. It's on May 4th and May 4th and 5th. Um, so we are, oh, it's going to be Star Wars theme. I, I won't show you my outfit. It's over here in a bag, oh. but I do, I do have a special outfit to wear. But um, anyway, so it's a two-day event. We always have um, amazing speakers. We've got, is it, what's, who do we have coming again, David? You have um, me. Well, we oh, sorry. Jen. The best one is Jen Lyles. We have Jen, of course. We have Nicholas Kent from C2, Kent. very, very high up in regulatory stuff. Uh, we have Chris DeLuca, who's a well-known attorney. He's going to be speaking. Uh, who else do we have? Ron Holt will yep. be presenting as well. And then uh, we have TFC. We have Sean from TFC, which is tuition financing, which is one of the gap lending companies or a, have, a company that can help with uh, funds for the students. And we have McClintock CPA, yep, CPA firm, firm. Speaking as well. So anyway, it's a two day event and um, you know, again, clients from all over the country and we it, it's serious stuff, but we also have fun. So we always have a nice networking event. Um, and get everybody together to let loose and, you know, chit chat and network about their schools to each other. So it's a lot of fun. I love that. Guys, should we, should we have you back sometime? I feel like we should. Oh, I hope so. I, I hope so. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> this was a blast. I absolutely love chatting financial aid with you guys. I already feel smarter after talking to you. Um, you guys are the best. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to our community for being on here. Yeah, today. thank you everybody for joining. We really thank appreciate you, you listening and we hope that yes. you all got something out of it. And again, appreciate your time. Because I know and everybody's congrats busy. to Tiffany. Yeah. I know. Oh, Tiffany, I can't wait for you to play this. It really has a good bass. So it's a good, <laughs> good tunes for the beach. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks Bye, for having everyone. us, Jen. Thanks, Jen.